All right, welcome back. I've got a new project to introduce. This is a 1981 DeLorean, and I was asked to do a EV conversion on it. This car came to me with no engine or drivetrain, super clean car, showed up in a trailer out front, and we pushed it out, kind of like Doc Brown at the Twin Pines Mall. I've got it in the shop, introducing Project Gigawatt. So as you probably know, this will be my second EV build, the first one being the Electrolyte, the uh, 1972 satellite that is Model S powered with a big battery, fast charging. Uh, that car, I built it as an experiment. I wanted to see if I could take old cars and rejuvenate them with modern technology to make them more powerful, more reliable, and future proof. And so that was a success. Now let's get on to the DeLorean. I knew the DeLorean would show up without a drivetrain, so I thought I should make a way to pull it in the garage easily since I've been working with disabled vehicles before. So I made this little winch arm attachment. It just goes right onto the lift and now I can use the 110 winch to pull it right in. Turns out I didn't need it. This is a super light car. But once getting it up in the air, I can really get a feel for what kind of size I have, where can I put motors. The DeLorean's a little weird. It's got this Y-shaped frame built by Lotus, and so it does limit how wide the motor can be. I wanted to use a Model 3 motor, and the Model 3 motor is wider as you go forward. So the motor and inverter are in front of the gearbox, which is the exact opposite of the Model S motor that I put into the satellite. So uh, this motor is not mine. I actually borrowed this from a friend of mine local who's uh, going to be using it in his project. And it was uh, nice of him to let me borrow it to, to do some fitting here to make sure that this is gonna work before I acquire one for this car. So I put it on my uh, bench and just lower the car down uh, on top of it just to see where it's gonna end up. And uh, this takes a little bit of uh, finesse and trial and error but um, I got it down where I could rest the ear on top of the cross member in the rear but if you look close on the left and right side up front the frame is actually setting on top of the mounting points for this motor so now I got to come up with an option to either U the frame or maybe I can just window the frame and fit these mounts through it I'd rather do as little cutting as possible and so that's the route I took uh, you can see the Pink Panther's giving us a thumbs up here. I think he thinks it's a good idea. We're going to go ahead and uh, find a place to cut the frame and see if we can get this to fit. So I've got some help with this project. This is my good friend Clint. He was over to help uh, line up the motor, uh, bounce some ideas back and forth. Where are we going to cut the frame? How are we going to do it? You kind of want to start small. You don't want to just go gung-ho. So that's why I didn't want to U-shape the frame. And it uh, turns out there's these circles that are pre-cut out in this DeLorean frame and they're uniform side to side. They're in the exact same place. So you know this is a square point with relationship to the frame of the car. Uh, the ear was lined up just below this when we, were, um, when we had the car lowered on top of the motor. So I thought this is a good place to start. I know it'll be equal side to side. And I'm going to start with just small cuts. I'm not going to go too deep, too far. I just want to see if I can get the mounting point of the motor to fit in this part of the frame. And then we'll figure out adjustments from there, figure out how we're going to actually attach it to the frame. And so after uh, the one cut, we are able to fit the, uh, the right side mounting point of the motor. It fit right through this slot. And then we just uh, repeated the same thing on the left side. And uh, with these small openings that we started with, we figured out where we need to uh, take out more material. So it turns out we have to go further back in the car, take out a little more material until we got uh, down to the perfect size. And then I was able to make this template. This template's actually a locating template. So if I was to do this again, I would just line up the curve on that hole that's existing in the frame, line up the bottom to the bottom of the frame. And now you have a mirror image locating cut template so you can easily cut out the perfect hole the first try. With the frame clearance now, we were able to get the motor up inside of those mounting points. And without any other fasteners of any kind, it was self-supporting up in the car. So now we could really look around, see if we wanted to move it forward or back, side to side, 
which side, uh, maybe one side needed to be higher than the other, and uh, got a really good feel to where we're going to start making the motor mount that will end up bolting or maybe welding onto the frame and uh, that will secure the motor in place as well as reinforce the frame as we put uh, torque on this frame in different ways than it used to have. So to start making motor mounts, I initially draw them up in Fusion 360 based on some measurements from that motor positioning. And this takes a little bit of back and forth, measure and then draw and measure and draw. And there will be multiple revisions doing this. And as you're drawing, I usually think I'm pretty close, but then I'll cut out the part initially in scrap metal just to see what it actually looks like on the car. And normally I find something, like in this case I found there was fiberglass behind the frame opening that was interfering, so I had to adjust the angle of the tab. And there's many angles at play here. The, the frame, it's a Y shape going outward as it's going back, but it also slopes up, and the bottom of the frame slopes different than the top of the frame. And then I want to have a, a locating point against the old transmission mount. So there's uh, lots of adjustments to be made. And even though I thought I was getting close, uh, there was usually um, a few revisions on each try. So uh, you're going to have some leftover parts. Uh, this is the uh, not so good pile. But in the end, you get a very refined drawing. And this is reproducible. You know, this can be a kit. I have a locate for the cut locate for the mount and uh, these will fit any DeLorean now. So this final draft here uh, you can see the relief cuts are cut by the plasma table because I don't have a press brake so I'm limited with tools but then I can use the other the tools in, in other ways. Nice thing about a relief cut is you can just bend them by hand or with uh, pliers or bending them against the table and you can really f refine the angles. So you can get them very precise and once you have them exactly fit uh, I fit these on the car with clamps and I mounted the motor so the angle of the ears is perfect and now they're ready to weld solid. So once you put this weld on there it might as well just be uh, bent except for it's very precise that you know exactly where it's going to bend when you cut a relief line in it. So welding across the bends now and then the mounting tab um, I welded on both sides of it because it's going to be supporting the motor but it's got very tight clearance so that that bracket's going to go against the frame, which is not only just a bracket to hold the motor, this will reinforce the frame, and that bent tab along the bottom will, will be pulling up on the frame as the motor torques under a high load. So uh, after it's all welded, I sanded it smooth, and now we have temp a template in place. This is where its final point. I can drill the holes and get this mounted up. Now there's three holes on the right side, and that's for this front tab. It's uh, You can't really get the motor in place if both tabs are in, in place at the same time. So I made a removable tab on the back half of the motor. And that removable, that removable tab has a little relief cut in for the washer because, again, it's tight clearance. And uh, it was either cut the washer or just make the, the tab fit the washer. So that worked out well. It's another advantage to cutting your relief line instead of breaking it. And now these will fit together, so the main bracket will, will be bolted to the frame, the motor will go into place, and then the front bracket will get bolted on, and then you can put the through bolt through, and this is what it looks like all mocked up without the motor. So now we'll just get the motor into place, and I'll be able to locate the rear tab for the final bracket. So getting the motor in the car, it's really not too bad of a job. Uh, one person, uh, I did this, uh, the lift helps of course, but you could be working on the ground with the jack. But uh, there's one advantage to the Model 3 motor and that's the removable mounting point on the left side. So the right side has a cast in place ear, it's cast to the motor. The left side's removable and by removing that you're able to twist the motor slightly, shift it over to the left side so when you lower the car down onto it, you've got enough clearance that now you can feed the right fixed ear into the mounting slot through the frame and actually just push it further through the frame than it needed to go and then bolt on the left motor mount and then you can lower the car a little further and get it centered in between the two tabs where it needs to mount and uh, then you can easily pass the bolt through and, and add the second bolt on um, mounting tab and then bolting these down this is 
torquing uh, everything together on the frame, which is actually a frame reinforcement. It's got the, uh, the lower bend on these motor mounts, so as the motor is under uh, hard acceleration, high torque, it's actually going to be pulling up on the front of the, uh, the mounting ears, front of the frame there, and it's going to be pushing down on this single motor mount in the rear. These are all, uh, they're still rubber isolated, so there's enough clearance on the frame that when you pass the bolt through and sandwich it down onto the grommets, the bushings in the motor mounts, it's completely rubber isolated. So it's going to be super quiet and smooth, just like a Model 3, but you'll still be able to hear the inverter and the gear whine. It's going to be just perfect, but uh, I think it fits in. Again, I love the application. Plentiful motor, tons of power, 250 kilowatts. It's going to be just a beast in this car, and I really love that I was able to figure out how to get the, the ears to pass through the frame but then also bolt down solid. These bolts start on the back of the frame, push through, end up on the front of the frame, and then everything bolts down um, with lots of reinforcement. So all I have to do now, draw up the rear mounting point. This is pretty easy. It doesn't have to be overly built because it's just pushing straight down onto the frame, but I got it cut out. I really like this kind of cut fold weld style. Uh, it's so easy to do at home and um, you get very precise uh, folds. It's going to bend exactly where you want it. So now that it's located, it's resting there in place, all I have to do is uh, drill this and add some bolts, which fishing the nut up inside this um, tube, I might have to weld a, a wire or something onto the nut, but it's not going to be too bad. But I think it looks great, super strong. And next is to locate all the points where I want to put batteries. There's lots of room in the back of this car. And actually the rear suspension is pretty heavy duty. I think uh, it's going to handle all the battery weight just fine, but I'll probably put a couple modules in the front as well. This is just going to be an awesome driver. Lots of features in this car. It's going to have heat, it's going to have AC, it's going to have fast charging, uh, fully functional everything. This could be a daily driver, better than it ever was. And I can actually fit a full 100 kilowatt hour battery pack into it. Uh, that'll be, you know, full weight car, but you'll have 350 miles of range if you really want to hit the road in this thing. So stay tuned. This is just episode one. Uh, next will be the battery boxes. I really appreciate you watching, and uh, I love the input that uh, there's such a, a wealth of knowledge in all of the viewers. So any input you have, I'm more than open to it. Uh, please add your comments and advice, and I'll... Look forward to showing you the next episode. Thanks a lot.